Hello everyone in this video, let us start uh, using Jira service desk on Jira server. So recently I promised that I will be uh, creating more videos on Jira service desk and I was looking at my previous videos, I never really talked about, uh, I did talk about Jira service desk but uh, I didn't really spend uh, too much time making videos on uh, Jira service desk and I didn't really spend time uh, uh, explaining what it can do for you. So today uh, I couldn't really think of anything better than uh, creating a video or not just a video but a video series on uh, Jira service desk. I have been creating videos on uh, portfolio and uh, I will be creating more videos on the portfolio series but uh, uh, today I thought I'll probably uh, start with Jira service desk. So the first thing that I will do is uh, is I will create a project. So when you have Jira software installed or it could be Jira core, you need to of course have your Jira service desk installed and you can do that by going to Jira administration and then if you click on the applications you can uh, take a look at your uh, applications like Jira software or Jira service desk. Let me enter my password and uh, then I will uh, take a look at uh, whether I have uh, Jira service desk inst installed or not. So yes, I do have a Jira service desk uh, version <coughs> 4.6.1 installed and uh, I'm using it along with Jira software and of course uh, Jira software uh, I mean irrespective of Jira software or Jira service desk, it will always have uh, Jira core. So we do have Jira service desk installed and uh, let us create a project and in this video we'll probably just create a project and uh, we'll do some uh, quick review of how Jira service desk works. So you need to click on the create project option and uh, in this video I will try to use a template called uh, IT service uh, desk but later on we can uh, or we will modify this template to support our processes. So I will be making these videos with the intention to use Jira service desk uh, for supporting your ITSM or ITIL based processes which is of course really important because uh, Jira service desk can support uh, those ITIL based processes. So let us use IT service desk and uh, Jira service desk uh, comes with uh, these templates and if you if you're using IT service desk it will come with a lot of standard uh, processes like service request, service request with approval, incident change, problem task and subtask. So I will be naming this uh, project as ITSM and uh, let us click on submit button. So now you of course have uh, a new project it will create a project for you and the process to create a new project is not really different from uh, Jira software or Jira core, I mean, I mean Jira business based projects because all you need to do you need to select the template but of course so later on you can um, always modify and you can always uh, customize your uh, your project. Now the first thing that I will do is I will uh, show you uh, very quickly, I'll not spend too much time in this video to go into the details. We'll uh, probably cover this. Uh, uh, we'll continue taking a look at uh, ITSM based uh, uh, processes. And my intention, as I mentioned, is uh, uh, is not to show you the capabilities of, or not only only to show you the capabilities of Jira Service Desk, but also how you can customize it to support uh, ITIL based processes, uh, your standard IT, ITSM processes. So the moment you install your, uh, you, create a, you create your project, you are presented with uh, this uh, queue and queue, if you look at uh, this uh, left hand side, I'll probably reduce the size so that we have more to see. So when you create, and by the way, we are working on Jira server version, um, so it is not cloud, although the things are quite similar, but uh, it is good to know. So. The first thing that you are presented with is a queue and queue is a basically a place where you will receive the tickets. The good thing about this queue is that you can uh, create more queues uh, and it comes with a lot of queues like uh, uh, you have something like all open issues, 
unassigned, unassigned issues assigned to me. Uh, you have a queue for incident, you have a queue for service request. So basically the idea here is that uh, you create a queue based on uh, maybe different processes or the or, or the way you want to filter them. Maybe you have uh, a team of uh, agents and those agents are working on maybe maybe some of those agents are working on incidents some of them some of them are just working on uh, critical incidents so you have the option to create your own queue so we'll we'll of course come back to the queue we'll spend more time on the queue uh, uh, in our in a different video uh, the thing that i wanted to mention is that this queue is something that you don't need to refresh so if there is a new ticket it will appear on uh, on this particular page automatically and uh, to show you that, let me now jump to the portal. Uh, and uh, portal is basically a place where your customers can come to raise a ticket. And this portal is uh, a bit different from uh, your Jira interface because portal is uh, a very intuitive and it is a simple web-based interface. Uh, it has its own unique uh, URL. So right now there is a portal uh, I mean, if you look at the URL, uh, URL, uh, you, I can probably show you the uh, URL very uh, quickly. So if you look at the URL, the, the URL is uh, your Jira base URL followed by service desk and then customer portal five. So this, uh, this portal is uh, basically uh, for the project that we just uh, created and it has a unique URL. You can share this URL uh, uh, on your website and uh, the way you configure your Jira service desk, maybe you want the customers to first sign up or maybe your customers are already part of your Active Directory. So we'll, we'll also spend some time on how you can configure, how you can give access to this portal to your customers. Uh, to, keep it, to keep it simple, you can just enable uh, public sign up so that uh, if you have, uh, let us say, hundreds or thousands of customers, they can just come here and they can sign up. And there is no limit on the sign up so anyone can sign up and they can uh, raise a ticket now once they log into the portal they will be presented with this uh, interface where you can take a look at uh, the option to select different type of uh, things that you can do or the customers can do now right now i'm looking at uh, this uh, search box we will come to the search again in a different video, but uh, in Jira Service Desk, uh, you have the option to integrate your Jira Service Desk with your Confluence. And Confluence is nothing but your knowledge base, or it could be a place where you can keep your knowledge base or self-serve articles. So let us say if I'm a customer and I have a problem with, uh, let us say, one of uh, the product or service, I can try to self-serve myself by looking at uh, the articles that uh, um, I can probably search directly in, in the in the knowledge base. And as I mentioned before, you don't really need to, uh, I mean, you can use Confluence, but uh, your Confluence uh, articles will be exposed on the portal and your customers don't really need separate license to view those articles. Now, we will come back to the knowledge base articles later uh, in future videos. But today I want to show you this uh, uh, this portal where you have the different request uh, types. Now, if you're familiar with Jira, in Jira we have issue types. Similarly, in, in Jira service test, you do have issue types internally, but for the customers, they have the option to raise a ticket with the help of uh, different request types like uh, right now you can see we have something like uh, get IT help, we have set up VPN, we have request a new account and so on. And these request types are grouped or they can be grouped uh, into something that you can see here on the left hand side. So you do have the option to create a group of different request types just to make it easier for your customers. It is something that you can do if you want, or you can just have a simple list of maybe two or three items, or you can just have one request types. So these request types are quite configurable. For example, if you select something like uh, set up VPN to the office, you will be presented to fill up a form. It is called a request form. Now this particular form can be or it is usually different from a form that you will get 
when you report a system problem or so and so on so the whole the whole idea here is that you create these request types based on what you want to capture from the customer so let us report a system problem and my problem is that uh, the uh, website is uh, very slow so i can type in here my summary and i can also describe like uh, i am trying since the morning and it is not working so i, I am not really a very happy customer <laughs> and uh, one thing that you can also do here is or you can see here that i am right now able to raise this request on behalf of someone else so your agents or uh, yes your agents uh, but people with the uh, additional rights they can also raise a ticket on behalf of someone else if you uh, think that is relevant maybe, maybe your customers are calling you and you have agents team of agents who will probably receive the call so they can just open the portal and they can raise a ticket on behalf of the behalf of the customer so let us raise a ticket and uh, you as a customer can also attach a file you can also select uh, a system let us say uh, there is a website that is uh, probably linked to your billing service or it could be any any service so you have the option to select a system and this select a system is nothing but a field in jira it could be a component it could be uh, a field that you define so again this is configurable and it will probably help you in uh, better routing your ticket to the right department and maybe of course for reporting purpose now at the same time when the ticket is raised your customers can also specify the urgency and impact now this can be important especially in cases when you have slas so let us say let, let us say you have uh, uh, some agreement with your customers or maybe your uh, uh, maybe with with an organization uh, maybe you are supporting a supporting an organization uh, so be, so maybe you have some kind of an agreement with them that uh, you will handle the urgent tickets with extensive widespread impact within 1 hour or within 2 hours so based on these two fields your slas can be different now we will come to know about the slas when we receive the ticket because in jira service desk there is a concept of sla which is really good and unique because uh, you want to resolve this ticket or get back to your customer within uh, let us say one hour or two hour so you can define different slas so you can have slas like time to first respond to the customer time to resolve a ticket so these slas will define your service and how well you're doing and of course we have reports around these slas so let us raise a ticket and the moment you raise a ticket your customer will uh, see a confirmation on the portal and based on how you configure your jira service desk your customers can also receive like an acknowledgement email with uh, this ticket id in the email that thank you very much for uh, reaching out to us at the same time your agents if you now look at your queue i'm looking at my all open queue but i can take a look at my incident and i i also have the option to take a look at these numbers here so these numbers can be really interesting because uh, it tells you how many tickets are there in this particular queue so i i can see immediately immediately that uh, i have one incident and if i probably close this queue side bar i want to get rid of this so i have more space so i can see here that my time to resolution is 4 hours my time to first response is 2 hours i can see the issue type so internally your tickets are your request types from the portal are linked to an issue type and uh, this is something that is uh, you, that is something that you can do when you configure the jira service desk although you also have the option to raise a ticket within jira uh, by clicking on the button on top in that case the request type may not may or may not be there so the request type will be there when you receive a ticket from the portal so this is something that you need to be aware of you can take a look at the summary component component is the drop down where we selected the service you can see the date you can see the priority you can see impact and uh, maybe you can see the urgency if uh, you select an or uh, select an urgency but when you click on the issue let us say you click on the in, on the ticket id the view will be very much similar to what you are familiar with already i'm sure in uh, jira you 
have a similar view where you can take a look at the details of the issue, you can take a look at the workflow, you can take a look at the SLAs on the right hand side. This is definitely new because uh, the SLAs are right now uh, paused because uh, uh, this is an another thing with SLAs. When you receive a ticket outside your working time uh, range or ti working time, uh, the SLAs will not work because it doesn't really make sense to uh, measure the the work that your agents are doing uh, when they are not even working. So these SLAs or the SLA clock will be applicable uh, when you receive a ticket during the working uh, time from 8 to 5 or 9 to 6, whatever. You can configure it. We'll of course spend time on it uh, later. We'll take a look at how SLAs work. So you can take a look at the SLAs and when you receive a ticket, you can uh, first take a look at the workflow. And uh, this workflow will of course give you an idea about how to handle the ticket. This is of course uh, something that you can always change. Now what you can do here is you can uh, click on the investigate button. And the moment you click on the investigate button, you can respond to the customer or you can add an internal command. So this is really unique with the Jira service desk. You have the option to respond to the customer. Yeah, th thanks for reaching out. Uh, we will look into it. So when you click on the investigate button, you are actually adding a comment which will be sent to the customer as well. Now, uh, this is something that you can uh, you can do if you want and uh, it, it will actually help your customer and it will give your customer some comfort, some assurance that people are working on the on the ticket. So I of course want to do more with the Jira service desk and I will be of course uh, doing uh, some uh, uh, some other things with the ticket like uh, I will be showing you I will I want to show you how to uh, monitor how to take a look at the SLAs how to make sure that uh, your comments are sent to the customer on the portal and whenever your customers are adding a comment you can also take a look at your uh, your uh, comments from the customer on the Jira ticket. So you can actually interact with your customers. And at the same time, we will also take a look at uh, some other things like uh, uh, how to create a queue, how to create your own report, how to also raise a ticket uh, by not going to the portal. So in Jira service task, you do have different ways to raise a ticket. It could be from the portal, it could be within Jira, it could be using REST API, it could be uh, maybe by sending an email. So there are a lot of things uh, that, are that are really unique to Jira Service Desk. And, uh, and uh, in the next video, we will uh, take a look at how to configure your own queue. So I hope you enjoyed watching uh, this uh, video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.